G'day everyone, welcome to Van Diemen's Land Model Bench. I'm Dan, and to a little video I put together to show you an upgrade I've done to my spray booth, which was one of those smaller portable models. Um, I had to do this because I needed to make some room to fit in uh, my German armoured train I was working on, as well as improve the general lighting, which was a big issue with it. Uh, the material used in this video is called Core Flute, C-O-R Flute, and I got this from my local hardware store here in Tasmania. Um, it's a material that's very commonly used in Australia for real estate signs uh, because it's quite good with uh, outdoor conditions and rain and that kind of thing. So anyway, I thought this video blog might be interesting to a few of you. Hope you have fun watching it and I'll see you on the next video. Okay, so um, this is a video just to give you an idea what I'm aiming for. This is my spray booth. It's just a little portable spray booth that I bought online on eBay. And uh, <clears throat> I've had it for a while but... I'm getting a little bit frustrated with it to be honest because it's um while it does the job reasonably well there are a couple of things that are causing not to work as well as it could and the first one is i've got these side panels because it was designed to be a um you see that's the other one there it was designed to be a portable unit even though i'm not using it like that so it came with these side panels and it had another one at the top here as well which i've actually removed because i couldn't really see very well uh, what I was painting and um, that helped a little bit but the, the problem I've got let's show you up here you can see there's a little LED light there and it's really not very good at all so uh, what I've had to do is sort of put this LED lamp in to try and put a little extra light on which kind of helps but generally what ends up happening is I end up holding the model away from the spray booth so I can see it more clearly uh, because I've got a a window just here near the spray booth. So what now is happening, instead of spraying it here where it should be so that uh, the fumes and things are going actually to the filter, I end up sort of bringing it out up here so I can see what I'm doing. And that kind of negates the whole point of the spray booth because half the spray doesn't go in there. And uh, more recently I just started using lacquer paints and that started to become a real issue because it just basically sort of fogs up the room and I've got to leave the place for a little bit to let it all sort of settle. So I've decided I'm going to try and modify my spray booth by removing these side panels and making a larger work area that I can um, really get easily into and also improve the lighting. In addition, what I'm hoping to do, if I go around the back here, excuse all the mess because it is very messy at the moment, uh, you can see these are all my primers and my different thinners and all those kind of things. So what I'd like to do is at least take some of those that I'm using fairly regularly and put them somewhere near the front of the spray booth so they're, they're more closely at hand when I need them. So that's the goal. Uh, wish me luck. And um, we'll be back in the second part of the video and I'll show you what I've come up with. Okay, so I've been down the hardware store and uh, these are the bits and pieces that I found that I thought might be useful. So I've got some lovely uh, wood trim here. It's actually Tassie Oak, which is a bit more fancy than what I really needed, but um, it's what I need. I also found this, which is a Arlick utility bar light. So it's supposed to be 950 lumens, which should be good enough for what we want. Uh, in Australia, we've got 240 volt, and this one has a 240 volt adapter included with it as well. So I'm hoping that'll do what we need. So I've got that. And then for actually extending the spray booth wider, the back of it there, if you like, I bought uh, a couple of sheets. I've probably got to be carried away. I probably need one sheet. Sorry, so to uh, get it in the frame. So I got some of this stuff, which is called core flute, and it's a huge sheet, as you can see. It takes up basically the whole dining table. I'm able to use a dining table because my wife's away on a business trip, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me doing this. Unfortunately, she's not here to ask. But anyway. Uh, this is the same stuff that's used out here in Australia, at least for uh, for sale signs, like for real estate and things like that. It's like a plastic corrugated, sort of, it looks like corrugated cardboard, but it's actually plastic. And uh, it's very lightweight, it's quite affordable, and you can cut it with a knife. So I thought this might make a good uh, way to extend the spray booth, because at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be structural. It's not going to hold any weight as such. It just needs to be able to... Uh, direct the, the, um, the spray towards the one area so I don't have overspray everywhere. So hopefully this will work. Anyway, we'll be back in a bit and we'll see how I went. 
Okay, so I've just gone and, and cut cardboard. So what I've done is I've cut a piece out here where the back of the spray booth will go. And for the rest of it, I just scored this um, plastic cardboard type material. So actually it works pretty well. So let me just give you a rough idea of what it's gonna look like. I haven't yet taken the front of the spray booth off, but you'll still get the idea. So basically what we're gonna do is these sides will come up. These will go around like so. And I'm just going to glue those bits together. You're pointing at this bit here. So I'm just going to glue those bits together there so you can see. That's just folding up and around. And then we have a piece that will go across the top here. And with that piece, I'm going to take my little light, which is actually quite lightweight, and I'm going to use some double-sided tape and basically just affix it to the piece here so that we'll be able to light up the, uh, the spray area. And that should work fine. Okay, so it's the next morning, and uh, the base of the of the extractor hood has um, has dried. So I've just added a couple of scraps on the side here that weren't here previously to allow for the the hood part, the top part of it, to go on. And I've just been doing some dry test fits this morning. And basically, what I'm going to do, um, if I put that there, give you an idea. So you can see there, there's the hood. There's the sides, they're going to be glued on the sides there. And then I'm going to have another piece going the other way to give a bit more strength and then we'll mount the light towards the middle is the plan. And that pretty much is going to use up all the supplies of this plastic sort of cardboard, whatever it's called, um, core flute that I've got. But I think that should just about do it anyway. So we'll back in a little bit after I've put the top on. Okay, so here's the uh, finished product, and I'm pretty happy with it overall. Um, I used liquid nails, which is like an adhesive space to work with plastics and woods and other sorts of materials to bond it together. And it has, it does work, but it's not particularly strong. So I think what I probably will do uh, after this is cured is I'll get some white gaffer tape, just some good quality one, and I'll just go around the joins and reinforce them with that, which should. Um, be more than enough to help it hold it in place. Um, I ended up using most of the two sheets. I've got a little bit left over, a few little off cuts, uh, one of which I'm going to use for a bit of a shield for the light. And to give you an idea where the light's going to sit, I haven't fitted it yet because I've got to get some double sided tape and obviously I'm waiting for these parts to dry. But um, I just turn it on there. That will come in and then sit down there like that basically and then illuminate the workspace below. So, overall, not too bad, and really not that expensive. Um, I think it was about, oh, I think nine or ten dollars a sheet, so around twenty dollars Australian for the, for the plastic sort of corrugated uh, material that I used to, to make the shield, and uh, I guess about another eight dollars for the glue, and really that's about it, the rest is just my time. Um, I did completely destroy a blade cutting this stuff because it can be a little bit hard to cut, but yeah, it wasn't bad. The great thing about this too, by the way, is this is just like cardboard and the fact that it's it's really feather light. So um, it'd be very, it's very easy to move it around, put it in the workshop and move it to where I want. The actual um, back piece there, you see the actual ventilation part and the filter is just sitting in that square there. So I can remove that anytime I want. If I want to uh, do an upgrade, I could put a new piece in there or whatever. Uh, or get to the fan if I need to replace the fan in it or something like that. So really all this was designed to do was just give me a larger workspace that I could um, put larger models, like 132, 124 scale um, kits, and this big 135 scale um, train that I'm doing at the moment. They'll all fit very comfortably and easily inside there. And uh, with a better lighting, I should have no problem seeing what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, guys, quick update. Here's the final version. I just uh, added a bit of cloth tape to reinforce it. And I fitted the light. And I've also just put a bit of brown paper in there as a uh, base. So when I get overspray, I can just take that out and replace it. And overall, pretty happy with it. So I think this should work well with some of my bigger kits. 
and it was a lot cheaper than buying a big spray booth. So guys, it's been a couple of months since I did that update to my spray booth and it's been absolutely fantastic. The core flute has turned out to be a really good material to make that extension with. Uh, for example, I can wipe out the inside of the spray booth with just a mild um, solvent to clean off any overspray without any dramas. And the extra workspace I've got now for working on the models has just been fantastic. It's also allowed me to get a lot of better shots as well of uh, some models I'm working on. So you can look forward to seeing that in some future videos. But if you've got one of these small portable uh, spray booths, I really can recommend you give a look at uh, upgrading it like I did here because I certainly have uh, really appreciated it. The only change, by the way, that I've made to the booth since you saw the videos was the double-sided tape I used on the light. That didn't work out and uh, after a while it started to peel off. So I just used the screws that actually came with the light fixture to actually fix it to wood or whatever and I just screwed them through the core flute itself and they've been holding on absolutely fine. No problem since. Anyway, that's all for the video. Hope you enjoyed seeing uh, my update of my spray booth and I'll catch you on the next video. Don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you like. Thanks for watching.